What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back at Dealer's Auto Auction here in Oklahoma City for some walk-arounds and test drives. Let's jump into this video today and see what we find. So I decided to start this video with rental cars. I love the rental car section, I really do. They're kind of a mixed bag. Some of them are in perfect condition and others have a little bit of cosmetic challenges going on like this one right here, 2023 Hyundai Kona. I've never actually driven one of these, so it'll be interesting to take this one out on a test drive. This one only has 23,000 miles on the odometer and it's already been given up by the rental car company. And this one does have some cosmetic challenges, but nothing that I think is too significant or severe, but it will definitely give you a little bit of a discount on the purchase price. Now, remember we're at a wholesale auction, which means these cars are gonna sell for less than retail. And anytime you find damage like this, where it's scraped all down the side, basically this car needs a door, you're gonna get an even bigger discount on the price. It still has the $450 cleaning fee, no smoking sign. Tires match, they're necks and tires. They look good, they've got excellent tread. The body looks good aside from that one door. Everything over here looks pretty decent. Alloy wheels. I'm sure this is a little turbo four cylinder and it really is a decent looking vehicle. And today I decided I wanted to look at not just rental cars, but I wanted to look at some of the smaller vehicles. We might get into a, a Jeep Gladiator or something here in a minute, but I kind of want to stick to the smaller fuel efficient vehicles because I feel like with the way the economy is going with interest rates through the roof right now, I think everybody's probably looking for something smaller, something that's going to save them money, something not super expensive to purchase. And on top of that, something that's going to be really fuel efficient and cheap to own. And I think something like this is a perfect example of exactly that. Low miles. It's got almost no miles on the odometer, guys. 23,000 miles. This thing is still under a factory warranty, which means you could buy this and not have to stress out over anything going wrong with it. Like I said, there it is. <laughs> the Smart Stream 6 Smart Stream G twin cam, little four banger, probably a two liter. Let's go up here and take a look. It says it is a 2.0 liter. Yeah. So it's going to be a little bit uneventful, <laughs> I imagine, as far as the, as far as the test drive goes. But I mean, not everybody needs a flashy car. You know what I mean? <laughs> a lot of people just want something that's going to get them back and forth to work, to the grocery store, doctor's appointments, take the kids to school. And something like this is absolutely perfect for that. It's actually a very versatile looking car. There's plenty of room, plenty of cargo space in the back here. It even comes with a spare tire. No way. Nothing comes with a spare tire anymore. All right. Props to Hyundai and Kia for uh, including a spare tire, nice cargo space, decent room in the back, and we'll find out how I fit in the front. I'm right about six foot tall. Okay, I'm not. I'm 5'11 and a half, if we're being honest. Um, 208 pounds. I fit nicely. This is actually, I've never been in one of these before. This is actually pretty decent. Let's see if we get any warning lights on the dash. Really, TPMS light on the passenger side front. We should probably go and just take a double check at that because obviously I don't wanna I don't wanna take a car on a test drive with a flat tire. I didn't see any flat tires. It's got a full tank of gas too. No kidding. You have different drive modes. We have normal, sport, and smart. I have no idea what smart means, but We'll, uh, we'll stick to sport mode because I kind of like sport mode. There's your infotainment center. Very intuitive. I mean, this is super easy to use. All the buttons right here tell you what you're doing. Your radio. Little is four weeks. Oh, let's okay. turn that down. <laughs> Media. So probably like Sirius XM HD radio. Seek and track. Then you got your favorites. You've got setup. Down here you have your climate control. Again, old school, very clunky, you know, knobs. Yeah, uh, and a few buttons down here. You have a couple of charging ports, USB port. You have your old school transmission selector. I like this. <laughs> Nowadays, everything's like a push button somewhere, man. I actually, I really like that. The interior is relatively clean. It actually smells pretty good in here. I'm sure everything works. Important window works. 
less important window works. And I'm gonna check that tire real quick. And as long as it's got air, we're gonna take this thing on just a quick run and see how it does on the test track, get it up to speed. Let's take a look at that tire just a little bit closer. You know, it is actually a tad bit low. I can see the difference between the front tire and the back tire over there but it's not low enough that it's going to concern me to drive it it'll be just fine and i love the daytime running lamps i actually think this is a pretty cool looking little car not too shabby and then i'll pull up the black book value when we get back to get a better idea of what something like this is going to cost when it runs through the auction let me get buckled up and we'll take it out on the road all right are we ready let's see if we can get out of here without getting run over because we're gonna have to pull out the wrong way. I hate doing this, but there's really no other way to do it. These these rows are pretty close together, guys. So um, yeah, if anybody starts heading this way, we're just gonna have to book it. Let me adjust my mirror real quick. Can we get through? No, there's nowhere. I was hoping we could squeeze through over there somewhere. Does not look like it. We'll just watch out for traffic. We'll be careful. And if I find a way out, you can bet I'm going to take it. But it looks like they're pretty packed today, guys. We can get through right here. Perfect. And now we're going to be going the wrong way. <laughs> it's this direction, too. That's all right. There's, there's more room to maneuver over here than there is on the other side. So I'm going to give you my honest opinion of this little car. Just looking around for something that may be a little more economical and still relatively enjoyable to drive. And I really think cars like this are probably going to start selling really, really well. People are going to be looking for cheaper, smaller, more fuel-efficient vehicles as prices continue to increase basically across the board for everything. So the test track is right in front of us. It looks like we've got it all to ourselves. What's it beeping at? All right. Yeah, see, I told you that tire wasn't all that low. It's 27 PSI. That's, that's fine. That'll be fine. It's getting cooler out. Tire pressures are going down. It's an important time, PSA, to inflate your tires, especially if you live in a place that's getting cooler rapidly. You're going to want to go out and increase the air pressure in your tires because as it cools down outside, the tire pressure actually goes down. A good time also to check your batteries. Take them to a local parts store. Have them tested for free. Most places will do that at no charge to you. Make sure your battery is good because the last thing you want is to come out on a cold, snowy day and find out you have a dead battery. All right, let's try it out. Is this a CVT? Ugh. I mean, it kind of seemed like it shifted, but at the same time, it almost seemed like it was a fake shift. You know what I mean? And I've heard of this. I'm not I'm not up to date with all the latest and greatest CVT technology, guys. I don't care for CVT. I never have and I never will. I like a transmission that physically shifts through the gears, although I do understand that CVT increases fuel economy. I, I understand that there is a place for it and in an economy box car like this, it's probably the right place for it. But that didn't feel like legitimate shifts. It almost felt like a slipping transmission. And I assure you, the transmission in this is not shift, is not is not slipping. It's probably a CVT that gives you fake shifts. So let me see if I can get you guys down here on the instrument cluster. Also, I'm not entirely sure this thing is turbo. I never felt any boost kick in. I really wasn't paying attention when I was looking under the hood, but the two liter may actually be one of the only naturally aspirated engines still left on the planet. Let's see what it does. You know, when I really held it to the floor like that, it actually did feel like it was shifting gears. Um, when we took off the first time, I did not have it to the floor. I was just kind of getting a feel for it. And yeah, I don't know. To the floor, it felt like it was actually shifting gears like a normal transmission. But when I was just kind of cruising, it was it was a little bizarre. It was it felt off. So you guys will have to comment below and tell me does this have a CVT or is this a traditional 
transmission. We're going to put this thing back in its parking spot. I'm going to pop the hood one more time because I'm willing to bet, I'm willing to bet this is a naturally aspirated engine and uh, I was wrong about this thing being a turbo. So aside from not being able to tell the difference between a CVT transmission and a traditional automatic transmission, um, and this stupid thing on the floor here that really gets in the way, the driving experience really was not bad at all. It was definitely a decent little car. I would drive it. I would absolutely drive it. Yeah, this is, this is not turbo. This is naturally aspirated. I kind of like that because although it's a tad on the weak side, you don't have any turbo lag. You know exactly what you're getting out of this. And again, the transmission, someone's just going to have to comment below and tell me if 2023 Kona has a traditional automatic transmission or if this is a CVT. Overall, I would definitely put a bid on this car without a doubt. I would replace that door because the rest of the car, the rest of the car looks really good and it absolutely deserves it. I enjoy driving it. It's not something that's going to astonish you when you take it for a ride. It's a very basic car, but definitely something that's economical and should be very reliable with a warranty. And right next to the 23 Hyundai, we have a 2023 Toyota Camry. Now this is a really nice looking car. It does have a little bit of damage that I can see from here. There might be more as we walk around, so we'll really want to give it a good once over, but so far it looks great tires look good it's a very sleek design the body looks really sharp on these toyota's come a long way in their designs over the years guys because used to they may have been reliable but they were pretty boring looking cars the majority of them were anyway maybe the uh maybe the avalon was okay i kind of did i kind of like the avalon if i'm being completely honest but aside from that you know they were you know they were pretty boring. Okay, I know they had the, the Supra. Um, they've had a few decent cars in their day, okay? But the traditional daily driver cars for most people, they were just kind of bland in the aesthetics department. Whereas I feel like now they've really shined. I mean, take a look at this car. In my opinion, it's absolutely gorgeous. There's so many curves. There's so many lines, sharp angles. They just did it all. You know, they threw everything at it. And I think it looks absolutely great. So the only real damage that I'm seeing is a mirror cap missing, which shouldn't be that big of a deal to replace. Hopefully the mirror is still intact. And it is. Yeah, it's just a mirror cap. The door itself looks to be in good shape. Like I said, all of the tires look good. The interior, this is going to be a pretty base model. You know, it's not like a fully loaded XLE or anything. It's cloth interior. You gotta remember, these are rental cars, and the majority of rental cars are disposable vehicles. This is decent though. It smells good, it looks good. This is an SE model. And what's the mileage on this one? 30,604. So this one also should still be under warranty. Let's take a quick peek at the interior on this side. It looks good. Like I said, it smells good. The uh, the infotainment though, eh, you know, it's it's a little dated in this one, and I get a lot of flack. Some of you notice I will pull the hood handle multiple times, and for some reason that bothers some of you. I, for for whatever reason, some of you get really disturbed at me pulling the handle more than once, and. Uh, I'm gonna give you the reason for that right now. Some of you probably already know the reason. This is hard to do one-handed. Uh, some of you probably already know the reason. Um, so if you think you do, go ahead and comment down below right now. And now I'm gonna tell you the actual reason. There are a lot of cars like newer BMWs and Mercedes that require you to pull the hood latch twice. If you only pull it once, the hood will not open. On newer European cars, they no longer have a mechanical release right here. All right, the mechanical release is actually part of the hood release inside the cabin of the car. So you have to pull it twice to get the hood to open. So what I do, and sometimes also, sometimes you pull the hood release once, you come out, walk around, and the hood for whatever reason didn't pop, even though you thought it did. So it's my experience that leads me to pull the hood release multiple times. 
whether it's a new car or an old car, I just tend to pull it multiple times just to be safe because I don't want to walk around, find out the hood didn't pop, have to turn around and walk back, pop it again and come back again. So if I pull it two, three or four times, I'm simply making sure that the hood is open so that I don't have to waste my time looking at uh, pulling the hood release multiple times uh, after walking around to the front and then going back. That, that's, that's the whole reason right there, guys. All right, let's take a look. What is this? Probably, again, like a 2 liter, 2.5 liter. This is naturally aspirated as well. This is 2.5. So it's a relatively big four-cylinder by today's standards for sure. This is naturally aspirated. You can see you have an air box that goes directly to the intake manifold. There's no turbos, there's no intercoolers, nothing. So this is something I really like. I love seeing modern cars that still use more traditional technology. I mean, turbos are great, don't get me wrong, I love them. But I also have a lot of respect for a car manufacturer still producing vehicles with naturally aspirated engines, especially big ones. A 2.5 liter four cylinder, that's a good size motor. The Iron Duke made by Chevrolet back in the day was a 2.5 liter. It's a pretty good size four cylinder, especially when you consider that General Motors back then was also making a V6 that was 2.8 liters. So three tenths of a liter bigger for a V6. That means these four cylinders are actually a pretty decent size. Oh no, someone left the key on. Yep, someone left the key on in this car and apparently it killed the car. Uh, you'd think the car would have some kind of a smart mode. And it would be like, hey, I think somebody left the ignition on and uh, we're going to go ahead and shut the car down to conserve the battery. That's okay, though, because this is not the only Camry out here. Believe me when I tell you, there's a million of these. So instead, we'll just walk two cars over to another Toyota Camry. This one's a 2022. It's the same body style, probably the same trim level. It's got right around the same mileage, 28,000 instead of 30. So very similar mileage. This one, however, has a mirror cap, which is nice take a quick peek at this one it looks just like the other one in fact the interior is the same that seat looks like something really really bad happened in it that that yeah that that seats pretty bad otherwise this is basically the same car it needs a thorough cleaning it's probably also an SE it is so relatively base model. You got a nice little spoiler. It's got Kennergy GT tires. They're all in good shape. Let's see if this one wants to start. This one's a bright silver instead of a dark gray. Let's see if we can get in here and this one's dead too. The ignition's left on. Some <laughs> Somebody's leaving the ignitions on in the cars and it's killing the batteries. So I'm on the hunt for another Camry, and here's our third one. I'm telling you guys, there's there's plenty of Toyotas out here. So here's another one. Same trim model, SE. It has, oh, this one's locked. <laughs> this just isn't gonna happen today, is it? So 2022 with 23,000 miles, looks like somebody locked it. This one also is a bright silver. Um, same interior, same silver color as the last one was. Body looks to be in good shape on this one. I can't believe this. Like, okay, here we go. Let me guess, the ignition was left on in this one too? No, that ignition was turned off. And again. Okay, we, we finally found a Camry we can look at. Oh, <laughs> you're joking with me. You're joking. Dead. Oh, someone left the headlights on. Someone left the headlights on. This cannot be an accident, guys. It's like somebody's out here intentionally messing with the Camrys because everything else seems like it's got a good battery. All right, we're gonna try this again. I'll be honest with you, I'm finally starting to run out of Camrys. Um, I had to walk all the way to the end of the aisle to find this one. So a 2023 Toyota Camry with 31,300 miles on the odometer. So again, this should still be a, uh, a car that's under warranty. We'll see if this is an SE. It is. This one looks a little bit nicer though. And this is not a rental car. We're now outside of the rental car section. Looks like this one has leather interior. Black leather. 
It's actually really nice. Let's <laughs> let's hope that this one didn't get the headlights or the key left on. Let's see. Headlights are off. That's a good sign. Let's hop in and see if it's got juice. It's dead. You've got to be kidding. So this was a rental car because it has the sticker up here. Uh, vehicle data transmission. I think that's for a rental car. Maybe that's for all Toyotas. In fact, I think it is for all Toyotas. Unfortunately, this Camry is also dead. And you're telling me this is a coincidence that all of the Toyota Camrys out here, every one of the Camrys are dead as a doornail. Uh, keys left on or the lights left on. I, I don't buy it, man. I don't know what's going on here, but obviously we're not going to be able to test out any Toyota Camrys today. Or will we? All right, here's a 2019 Toyota Camry. <laughs> This one is also a rental car. 83,000 miles on the odometer, lots of scratches and scuffs, a little bit of PPF. This one looks like it's got a little bit higher of a trim level. It's got these nice looking wheels, backup sensors. Well, that's because this is an Avalon, not a Camry. I mean, technically, I think they're kind of the same car, but the Avalon obviously is top of the line. So this is going to have a nice, beefy, naturally aspirated V6. This one is, oh, come on. <laughs> this one is a little bit older and obviously it's got some miles on it. And this one will not be under any type of warranty. Tires look good. Body looks relatively decent. It's got a pretty big dent here. There's a lot of scuffs and you can tell car wash stuff all over it. Still has the sticker, don't smoke. This one has, leather interior looks like it is ventilated leather interior actually looks pretty decent not too bad it smells it smells it smells it has power so far so good take a look back here very nice you got heated seats back here JBL audio system let's climb up front and take a look at the business end of things. You get a little bit nicer infotainment center, digital climate control, a really nice gauge cluster here. Let's see if we can start it. There we go. That didn't sound like a V6 to me. That sounded like a four cylinder. Okay, let's start with turning down all of the climate control. We get a nice infotainment center here. This is pretty decent. Latest miles per gallon, 28 MPGs. So this is what I'm talking about. It's pretty good fuel economy, especially if this is a six cylinder. And I don't know, I keep thinking it should be a six cylinder. Maybe I'm thinking of something like a Solara. Let's pop the hood. Just take a quick peek. It is the six cylinder. It really sounded like a four banger when I, when I started it up. It really sounded like a four cylinder. Nope, that is the D45 V6. And it runs like a top. Runs absolutely great. So it may not be the prettiest car cosmetically, but overall it's pretty decent for an 80,000 mile rental car. That's a lot of miles on a rental car, guys. So let me buckle up. I'm gonna take this one for a drive. I think I'm really gonna be impressed with this one. Number one, 28 miles a gallon out of a V6. That's, that's honestly pretty impressive. And this is a 2019, it is a little bit older, but still a really nice car. All right, we've got annoying backup sensors making lots of noise, a really nice screen with backup camera. Now, I'm not, squealing brakes that's fine um i'm not big on toyota i mean i've never have been and it's not because there's something wrong with the cars they're actually great cars i'll be the first person to admit that toyota makes some fantastic cars you want to talk about reliable you're not going to get much better i think than buying yourself a toyota and with that said they can be a little pricey 
you're going to pay a little bit more for a Toyota Corolla or a Toyota Camry than you will a Ford Focus or Ford Fiesta or a Chevy Malibu or a Chevy Spark or take your pick, a Dodge Dart, which they don't make anymore, but you get the point. You're going to pay a little bit more for something like this than you will for an equivalent American car. And the reason for that is, well, it's simple. I mean, this car is well built and that's what it comes down to. I'm not saying that American cars are not well built. I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that, you know, when you buy a Toyota, you can rest assured that you're getting what you pay for, you know, and some of these other cars, that is not the case. They may be great for a little while, but long term, not so much. If you buy a Toyota, I think you should buy a Toyota for the long haul. You should buy a Toyota because it's something you're going to own for five, six, seven, maybe even 10 years, maybe even pass down to your kids. If you want something that's going to be attractive by today's standards, they're looking pretty good. You want something that's going to be attractive, has enough electronics. This isn't all that sophisticated by today's standards, but I mean, it's good enough. You've got heated and I think you have cooled seats if yeah cooled seats up front this is not bad a v6 which is something that's hard to find anymore unless it's some kind of a turbo eco boost deal you know I think a Toyota is great and that's really the reason you don't see me buying a Toyota that's it I don't buy cars for the long haul I don't buy cars for long term I buy a car I typically keep it for a few months if it's like a personal car of mine, I might keep it for a year. Uh, other than that, no, I'm not. I'm not out here looking for something long term like this. But if I ever decide to settle down, marry myself to a vehicle, honest to God, I would probably buy something just like this. I, I would probably go with a Toyota. I'm going to get you guys down on the instrument cluster there. We're going to kind of give it some beans and see how it does. Traction control had to kick in. That V6 gets it. That V6 gets it. So steering felt great. Brakes feel excellent. At speed, there was no vibrations, no pulling, no nothing. This, this car is perfect. There are no warning lights on the dash at all. I mean, this car is legitimately perfect. I would take this all, all day, all day, every day. I would drive this car and absolutely love it. Is it a head turner? Not so much. Um, you know, you're not going to get attention. And I'll be the first to admit, some people love getting attention. And that's why they buy their cars. You know, whether it's a flagship Mercedes or BMW or they buy Lamborghinis or Ferraris, you don't buy one of those because you don't want attention. All right, that's the last car that you buy when you don't want attention. You buy a car like this if you're not looking for any attention at all. And I'll be completely honest with you, I forgot where I got this car from. Oh, crap. I don't think it was here. I think it was the next aisle. It's very important you put these back where you get them, but I got so busy talking that I forgot where I pulled this thing out of. Um, if you're looking for a car that's going to get attention, you know, th this is, this is not the car for you, you know, go buy something else, something a little louder and, and, and crazier. Um, but if you're looking for something that just kind of blends in to its surroundings, uh, this is, this is absolutely perfect. I mean, you're not going to get anybody's attention in this car. It's a smooth running and driving car and it's reliable. And because this one's a 2019, it's a little bit older. This one shouldn't cost too much money. We're going to pull up Black Book on this right now. We're going to find out what you should expect to pay for this from the auction. So forgive the noise. It is a little loud because they're pressure washing cars out here. But the Black Book on this really not too shabby, guys. $23,275 is what you should expect to pay for this wholesale and the loan value is right around $27,000 on this. So you could buy this wholesale, and if you wanted to, you could go take out a loan through your own bank or credit union, 
and actually come out a few thousand dollars ahead on a car like this. Now, on the other hand, if you wanted something like this, a Nissan, I'm sorry, an Infiniti. Here we have a 2019 Q50 with 70,000 miles on the odometer. Very similar miles to the Camry, but this was gonna save you a little bit of money. This one, 17,000 bucks you could drive away with this. And apparently this is a 3.0 liter and it's got a T next to it. I can only assume it's a turbo. This is also a rental car. It has good tires. It's the same color as the Avalon. It has a sunroof like the Avalon, leather interior like the Avalon. Probably a few less features and I've never driven one of these before, so we're gonna take this one out for a little test drive today. Why don't we take a quick peek at the interior, see how it looks. I'll be honest with you, I think I like this better than the Avalon. We'll see if the infotainment is, oh, the infotainment is by far superior. Yeah, yep, yep, definitely superior. Everything in here is more ergonomic, more intuitive, driver-centric. This thing, this thing is honestly pretty sharp. Okay, so I like this better. <laughs> Dude, I like this better than I like the Avalon. We'll pop the hood and take a closer look at what's going on over there. Looks like we've got power. Let's go ahead and start it up. Get that light out of your eyes, there you go. Here's your infotainment center. Yeah, that's a... Uh, a tad bit more sophisticated than the Avalon over there, isn't it? You've got a screen down here, a screen up here. It's very nice. This is, this is really nice. Phone information, infinity drive mode selector. You've got a display button here. This controls the top screen. A good old fashioned gear selector. I love seeing this, I do. Little ashtray looking thing right there. I wonder if we have drive modes or anything. We have an eco report and let's see. Start, cruise, deceleration. Yeah, I don't care about that. All I wanna know is what's the fuel economy in this? We have different drive modes. We'll go with sport because I, I like to have everything in sport if we can help it. Your climate control looks like the touch of a button. You can adjust your climate control on the screen. You also have physical buttons on the side. And I know that light has got to be absolutely ruining the video. This is pretty decent, guys. Let's pop the hood on this real quick. Take a look on the dash here. It doesn't look like we have anything on but this one yellow triangle. I have no idea what that's for because there's no information telling me why it's on. We'll pop this hood. Important window works less important window works. Be careful not to hit the car next to me. The interior of this car feels very nice. It is supple, it is soft. V6 twin turbo. So I've got a hunch that this one's probably gonna move pretty good, you know? I, <laughs> I think. I think this one will. Uh, I think this one will get down the road just fine. All right, let's take her out for a spin. We're parked right next to a Malibu, and I think that's a Nissan Rogue over there. Brakes feel good, and steering feels nice so far. So this one, this one I may actually be interested in purchasing. I like the Toyota, I really do, but at twenty some thousand dollars. You know, at least me sitting there thinking, is there something better that I could buy? And here's another thing. Obviously, at 28 miles a gallon with the Toyota Avalon, that's that's good, especially for a, for a V6. But we kind of are now looking at cars that are not so fuel efficient by today's standards, right? We're looking at V6 cars, and they're a little more sporty, a little more fun. But if they can get 28 miles a gallon, I still think it's reasonable fuel economy, but it's definitely not, you know, it's not some of these new teeny tiny kind box cars that can pull 38 miles a gallon all day long, or like a Prius. You really want something that's fuel efficient, get a Prius because the new ones are getting like 60 miles a gallon. Let's see what it does. There 
There's 60. Now, I didn't floor it. I typically will not really lay into the car on the first run down the track. I prefer to go a little slower, get to feel the car a little bit. You know, I want to make sure I'm not, well, you know, going to hit the gas and end up crashing into a wall, obviously. So uh, now that I've gotten a feel for the car, let me get you guys down here on the instrument cluster. Hopefully you can see and let's... Oh, wow. Wow. That's 60. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. And the uh, the little triangle that was on the dash has gone out. So it is no longer lit up. Um, yeah. So the air conditioning is cold. The car drives absolutely perfect. And I'm going to tell you right now, choosing between the Avalon or this Q50... Uh, there's no choice. There's none. The Avalon at twenty-two, twenty-three thousand dollars versus this for seventeen. I'll take this for seventeen grand all day. Way more powerful. Way nicer. The interior is far nicer in this than it is in the Avalon. The technology far superior in this. I love the dual screens. That just looks expensive. This is a nice car. This one, this is a good one. And it is now on my list. I'm going to back this thing into its parking spot, put it right back where it came from. But this one I am very, very interested in, guys. This is a solid vehicle. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to get out of here. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. You comment below and tell me out of the cars that I looked at, which one would you buy, especially if you were considering something small and fuel efficient, like the, the Hyundai Kona that we looked at, or between the Avalon and the Infiniti Q50. Uh, I'm absolutely sold on the Q50 all day, every day I would take the Q50, but I'm definitely curious what you guys would pick if you were looking for a car and going through the same cars that I just went through today. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. Let me know you enjoyed it and consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Till next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.